What's going on guys, Ryan from Master of Raptor here and I've got a new video. I want to show you guys something that you may or may not have seen before. It may look kind of familiar. You also may be thinking, what on earth is wrong with your headstock? So today I'm going to be showing you guys a Les Paul that is very near and dear to my heart. I actually happen to have two of them, which you guys probably saw in the little intro scene. Um, but this is a 1989 Epiphone Les Paul Custom. Uh, so kind of a cool guitar because a couple things about it. This was the first year that Gibbs or the Epiphone rather made not only Les Paul Custom, but also is the first time they had a licensed Les Paul. So up until 89, they had the Epiphone LP 1, 2, and 3, which were kind of Les Paul shaped guitars. But the horn was slightly different. They had a Steinberger locking trim, so it was definitely the 80s. I think those started around 85, 86. So a couple different generations there. They were also made with basswood, and uh, they were not carved tops. I'm pretty sure they were flat. So the 89 was the first year that Epiphone decided to do like an actual Les Paul. Um, you've got the Gibson truss rod cover and kind of a, you know, the actual Les Paul shape. Everything about it, you've got a maple cap, mahogany body, what you're used to seeing on a Gibson. And uh, one of the other things that's cool about it, it was also the last year that Epiphone did this style of headstock. So it's kind of like a shrunken up top Gibson style headstock. You still have the open book, don't have the clipped like dog ear is what they called it afterwards, starting in 1990. And uh, so definitely it's a really cool guitar, only one year made. So trying to find anything like this, it's, it's kind of hard to do. I, you know, I've had my first one since I was probably 13. That was the black one. And then, you know, it's been what, almost 10 years. And I finally found a white one. You don't see these come up very often. So if you do, please uh, you know, do yourself a favor. And I've got my camera and give me a little bit of a glare. He's actually the one that found this for me a couple days ago. He would just happen to jump onto Facebook marketplace and, uh, Lo and behold, this thing was sitting there, great price, couldn't resist it. It was only, you know, maybe a 30, 40 minute drive, a 35 minute drive to go get it. And uh, we brought it, joined the family, and I couldn't be happier to have it. Uh, so this one is named Minideal, and the black one over there is named Lawless. So let's run through a couple of specs with it. So I've changed guitars. This is my original. Uh, this is Lawless, yet another 89. Fortunately, I don't have the serial number sticker on here. Um, one of the other quirks for 89 up on Les Pauls is they had stickers with the serial number instead of having them, you know, stamped into the back. So I'm not sure exactly what they were thinking there. It seems like it'd be a really easy thing to, to, to steal, unfortunately. But I'm gonna go over a few of the specs that are kind of different between this one and the white one. Um, however, they are the same guitar. This one, a little bit less modified. I still have the original, um, you know, the original bridge, the original tailpiece, the original tuners. On the white one that I've named a mini deal, uh, unfortunately those have been change just because the person that had it before me, he probably, you know, it's a 31 year old guitar. It's been played, it's been gigged, it's been toured. It's, you know, in fairly good condition for the age, but it's still pretty well beat up. And uh, I have no doubts that everything, you know, was starting to show some age. So the main differences are though, that we both have a full set of Seymour Duncans in both guitars. This one happens to be the Slash set. Um, really big, you know, I'm, I'm hugely influenced by Slash, especially when I was in high school and my freshman year of high school when I kind of get this guitar up and running. That was one of the first purchases I made was the Slash APH2 sets. And one of the things that's cool is I didn't know this until after I get the guitar, but the white one that has the Seymour Duncan whole lot of humbucker set, really similar pickups there. I hadn't ever like looked at the specs side by side, but as far as output you're looking at for a bridge on the Slash set, it is I think 8.9. And then for the resistance, or sorry, the output on the whole lot of humbucker, you're looking at 8.8. .8. So pretty close there. And then as far as the neck goes, I think the slash is 8.3 and then 8.2 for the whole lot of humbucker set. So you're looking at almost the same output. I mean, point one, you're really not going to notice that. But the big difference is the slash set has Alnico two magnets, whereas the whole lot of humbucker set has Alnico five. So you're getting a little brighter, a little bit more bite and a little bit more mellow kind of warmth, rounded tone from the slash set. So I'm going to show a little bit of demonstration just kind of sh between those two humbuckers. Not that that's what this video is geared towards, but just, you know, figure while we're here, let's go ahead and get a little bit of a sound comparison, right? And uh, other than that, you know, both of them have the wiring upgraded, nothing super special. This one, the only mod is there's like a little tone mod to where when you pull out on the uh, on the tone spot, it goes to tone like straight up to 10 automatically. It just like disengages the knob from the circuit. So if you want to have, say like, you know, have it rolled down for a woman tone and then just immediately pull it to go straight to 10. It's kind of a useless mod, but it's there if you need it. I have yet to use it and I've had this guitar for 15 years, so. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, let's go a couple playthrough of some tones we can get from this thing. We're going to start on some dirty stuff. I might throw in some clean. We'll see how I feel. I don't know. 
But uh, yeah, so let's start with Lawless. <laughs> So that's going to do it for this video. To end it, guys, I'm going to go ahead and do a playthrough of our latest single, Open Your Eyes. You can check it out on Spotify. You can check it out on Apple Music, YouTube, wherever you get your music. Just Astro Ever After, Open Your Eyes. It's going to be the latest release on there. Give it a listen. You won't regret it. And uh, like I said, I'm going to do a playthrough of it. Please do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help the channel grow if you liked what you saw. Um, also, if you guys have any more information on these 89 Les Pauls, um, or 89 Epiphone Les Pauls, leave it down in the comment section. There's not a ton out there. I'd be really curious to know how many were made. Um, there's only you know four colors available for uh, for the 89 Les Pauls, two custom, two standards. So if you guys have any more information or if you have one, shoot me a message, let me know. I wanna see what you guys have done with them. So uh, We may or may not try to buy one off you. As we're making alien noises. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Like I said, hit that like and subscribe button. This is Open Your Eyes.